we're going to place an ammeter, a digital uh, cheap ammeter there and we're going to place it on this side between this battery and the LED then we're going to place it on this side between the LED and the parallel battery bank and then we're going to place it here and then we're going to place it there and then we're going to compare that with the conventional usage of um, a conventional way of powering those which would be three of these uh, batteries in series creating 3.6 volts and the reason why we have five here is because this power is being transferred through both these lights and these lights produce a reduction in voltage um, so you see on this negative rail that connects the parallel bank with the serial bank negatives to negatives and we're going to go from the negative side of the battery on the parallel bank to the positive of the LED we'll place that wire there okay and we shall disconnect this one here so that's the negative of the parallel bank we will connect one side of the M meter to that and the other side to the LED what? hang on that's not in the textbook how is that transferring power between the negatives to power up that green LED and how come it's the same amount or didn't they teach us in school that the light would have consumed that power and therefore there's no point doing what I'm showing you right here and that you may as well pay up to 10 times as much and run the negative of that LED back to the batteries in the conventional method or oh, who's ripping who off and convert it into uh, the 12 volt variety where you do the same thing with battery um, 12 volt batteries um, you do have to be mindful of the batteries you know safe cutoff point you know for say a sealed lead acid battery you don't want to drop it below 12 volts um, because obviously that will do damage to the battery so be be considerate of what type of battery you're using when if you're going to go that route um, be mindful that you know say these batteries have a uh, a point amp at point eight amp hour recharge rate and you'll damage them if you charge them any faster than that that's it my top five reasons for um, why everyone should have this uh, circuit I'll give you a clear view of the actual circuit so if you wire it up that way you can see with these batteries here they're in series positive negative positive negative and then the positives are joined for both banks this side they're all in parallel so this side's in series this side's in parallel the light on the negative rails here from both battery banks um, will give it that long long run time you can run the light on the positive side but it will not run anywhere near as long so if you're going for efficiency over brightness it will be brighter if you place it on the positive lines uh, just because of the potential difference but it will definitely last longer if run on the negative sign so there's that you can um, swap that out the LED here for and place it as I said just then in the positive line but it, it will be brighter but won't last as long alright guys thanks for watching capacitors and it is wired differently and the important thing here to note is where the positive lines from both battery banks to which point on the relay they go um, and 
for the capacitor version these are literally swapped over so it's important to keep that in mind um, you won't get the high voltages for the capacitor version that you need if it's connected this way for the light so we'll demonstrate that again you know if you, if you don't really need that much light you can you can switch it to this way and that will allow it to sort of recharge both batteries I know that sounds strange it does recharge both batteries um, when I uh, leave these to rest after they've been run for say 12 hours they will both back uh, jump back to the voltage that I started with so these ones will come back to 1305 each and these ones will usually be around about 1310, 1315. Um, so it is, contrary to what we've been taught, um, it is recharging both the primary and the receiving batteries. Okay, so now we'll get rid of this light and I will bring in the capacitor. And I'll show you the schematic, which again, which will, it will be at the end of this video. So place that negative on there. So we're back to the normal transfer method. We've got our relay, which will disconnect. And as I'll show you on this new schematic for the capacitor. Okay, this is the uh, schematic for the capacitor version. Um, we've got the same uh, same uh, relay here, but the wiring is different. And the positive is now going to the lower terminal, and the po positive from the serial battery, sorry, going to this lower terminal on the relay, and the positive from the parallel batteries going to the higher terminal there okay so we connect that up and this is very important if you don't connect this up this way around for the um, for the capacitor version you don't get you don't get a high voltage you only get around about 50 volts um, but that's suitable for the lighting and uh, that light I need to point out to is a 24 volt slash 12 volt light so um, the 250 volt mark um, on one side so the important thing to note here is that it requires a complete connection back to the negative to obtain these really high voltages and so what we will do is because because this um, uh, capacitor is now isolated by a singular wire is obtaining a positive and negative uh, voltage and charging the capacitor via a single wire it'll go to around about 60 volt mark um, not too much higher um, but if I connect this white jumper lead to the negative and then I place that on the negative of the battery now that we've seen it's gotten up to 61 volts by itself now we'll see the difference of connecting it back to the circuit now again this is only connected one side the positive line is not connected on these capacitors positive line is here and it is only going to the meter now you can see that that could be <laughs> could be considerably dangerous um, 240 volts and climbing DC um, you can also use an antenna say um, you're either an earth rod uh, into the ground run a wire to this um, other lead here this other side of the full wave bridge rectifier and possibly gain maybe another 10 volts on top of that um, you know 10 or 20 volts depends on what you put there say you put um, an, an antenna you know a, a metal 
uh, insulated capacitive plate hung up high in the air you will get a lot higher than 260 volts um, but it all just depends on what your needs are um, you know this I'll, I'll disconnect that now because it doesn't go much higher than that it'll take a long time if it does so we'll disconnect that now and now we need to point out the relevance of just how dangerous that power is um, you wouldn't think that it would be able to do that but it clearly does so I will disconnect the uh, negative lead uh, the lead that connected it to the battery and I've disconnected the relay and now at 228 volts uh, block your ears I am going to short that capacitor out actually for everyone's benefit let's just turn off the light and then we get a pretty bright spark okay that always makes me jump so that's pretty much it um, there is a lot of importance to having this wiring the right way um, and again that's using the transfer method and um, you know transferring power instead of using it and in using and in this arrangement here we're really just facilitating uh, that self-charge mechanism uh, we're taking advantage of a collapsing coil and the way I understood it from when I was researching magnetism um, was when we shock a magnetic field um, by attempting to collapse it by placing the reverse magnetic field against it uh, it's quite a brutal um, a, a brutal thing to do to to the magnetic field when that collapse occurs um, the universe the earth's magnetic field recognizes that depletion in that field and instantly uh, restores it back to its uh, previous uh, magnetic field strength so that's where the inrush of power is coming from